be talking about, and she said she'll be talking about a case study where a baby was taken from its mother only 12 months ago. So I imagine this to be a very emotional and informative talk. Please make her welcome, this is Julian, Julie Thomas. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, firstly, I too would like to acknowledge the Ngunnawal people, the traditional owners of the land that we meet on tonight. I'd also like to acknowledge um, the other panellists, uh, any other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander brothers and sisters here tonight, and um, brothers and sisters from other cultures. Um, I hope I don't bore you tonight. I'm not a great public speaker, but anyway, I'll do my best. When I went into Jarrington Health Service, it's an Aboriginal community control health service, one of 150 nationally. When under is mildly accredited, with a well-proven business model, 29 years of continuous services, incorporating a strong focus on governance, ethics and sustainability, and a robust accountability and transparency framework. So, Wanunga actually started in 1988 when the Queen visited Australia. Um, the inception of Wanunga was when Aboriginal people come in to protest at the Aboriginal Tent Embassy. So, and the founder of Wanunga was the late Olive Brown. So Wanunga's got a, 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 a very long history of um, working with people that are disadvantaged. Um, our reporting and compliance, we, we report over a hundred, we do over a hundred reports uh, prepared annually to the government and other funding bodies. Wanunga has a proven record of sound financial management under resource constraints and increasing pressures for the need for services. Wanunga is a peak health and wellbeing organisation, catering for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander population through culturally and spiritually holistic wraparound services in the ACT and surrounding region. Wanunga provides integrated client-centric services through comprehensive multidisciplinary case management practice and coordination. Each client is supported at a time by a team comprising more than one program area. It is common for GP services, in-reach specialists, ancillary services and the social health team to all be working with a client together as a team to ensure the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual and cultural considerations of the client are attended to in order to achieve the best possible outcomes for the client, their family and the community. The social health team is made up entirely of Aboriginal workers who often have a pre-existing connection and or relationship with clients. This creates cultural trust, safety and trust for clients, which are held in high regard by both clients and workers. Wanunga has a robust database, which has been recording data for each client and area of Wanunga Aboriginal Health Service work since 2004. The communicare system has recorded information on 18,029 registered clients as of May 2017 who have access when under. Of this number, 6,500 clients are considered current clients as they have access within the last three years. And there are also 702 transient clients when under provide services to. So they could be clients at the Ten Embassy, that can be people that come in from other parts of the country. When Angus clients come from 224 postcodes, there's 66 in the ACT, and 324 suburbs. So when Angus provides comprehensive, culturally safe health services through a holistic approach, with all programs developed directly to meet the needs of clients, Current services provided include GPs and nursing. We've got nine full-time GPs. We've got um, a team of nurses, four nurses. We've got a midwifery clinic with two midwives. We do immunisations. We're about to do justice reinvestment. 
we do prisons outreach, we do men's women, um, including gynaecology and child health, hearing health, dental clinic, physiotherapy, podiatry, dietitian, nutrition, psychiatrist and psychologist, mental health services and counselling, diabetes clinic, healthy liver clinic, child and adolescent health clinic, healthy lifestyle programs, including a uh, touch football and basketball teams, Wananga Boxing, which is at 255 Canberra Avenue in one of the old hangars, alcohol and drug services, road to recovery alcohol and drug groups, smoking cessation services, no more Bunda group, needle and syringe program, women's group, men's group, healthy cooking group, mums and bubs group, wellness group, anxiety and depression, healthy weight program, a range of in-group specialist <coughs> services and clinics that are delivered together with specialists from the Canberra Hospital. So we actually uh, had the doctors from the General Medicine Clinic at Canberra Hospital. When we refer out, we have a 60% no show rate. And uh, by bringing the specialist into us, that then our clients can get familiar with the people that they will see at the other end when they go into the hospital and that works really, really well. So we have a home maintenance team, a housing liaison service, care and protection liaison, court support, Centrelink assistant, client assistance, fuel vouchers, food security and clothing, furniture prescriptions, nappies, hygiene products, Christmas hampers and funeral support. Relationships Australia do in reach to both clients and staff. We have a youth diversion program including Narrabunda House and Ted Knox, age care assessment advocacy, bringing them home, NDIS, eye health, affiliate functions, probation and parole, reporting service. A lot of our people get breached for not going to um, probation and parole. So what we've done is actually probation and parole come to Wanunga on a Friday. So those people actually can get transferred into Wanunga. They see their probation and parole officer and then they can actually attend the men's anxiety and depression group in the afternoon. So um, we do 10 embassy support, health promotion, community events. And on the 26th of May, we'll be doing the Sorry Day Bridge Walk. And this year, our bridge walk will be in memory of Stephen Freeman, the young Aboriginal man that uh, died in custody on the same day as our bridge walk last year. So it brings another man into stolen generation. Um, so yeah, and it was very sad to hear that we had another death in custody. And even though that young man was an Aboriginal, I think that any death in custody these days, it shouldn't be happening. And until we get better facilities, drug and alcohol rehabilitation and mental health facilities, we're not going to stop it, you know. So I think, you know, substance is a symptom of a cause. It's not the problem. It's all the underlying issues that haven't been addressed in people's lives. That's the cause. And in our community, it's in a generational trauma. Um, so there's no prescription, no doctor can give you a prescription for trauma or any of it. It's, you have to start with the babies, you know, with these young people and provide intensive support to these families if we're ever going to make a difference. But I'd just like to read a couple of case studies and one is a young mother and baby. Twelve months ago, when I'm the self social health team received a call from a client who had recently birthed a few hours beforehand. She stated that child youth protection services had arrived and were there to remove her newborn son. The social health team, with the support of a Wananga midwife, went straight to the hospital to provide support to the client and advocate and liaise on the client's behalf. The social health team tried to get a clear reason of why the child was being removed and the rush around the removal. The social health team li liaised directly with me as the CEO, legal aid and the hospital. 
So child protection workers advised that the newborn was to be removed due to safety concerns. Legal Aid was able to provide advice straight away and, rep and representation straight away. Child protection did remove the child that day. A child that was bre breastfed and in the early stages of bonding with its mother. Social health team ensured that child protection put processes in place to collect the mother's breast milk and arrange visitation straight away. Legal Aid responded immediately to our request and the mother and child <coughs> cried and they... Oh, sorry. I've lost the page, but anyway, we'll just keep going, all right? Yeah, I didn't know the story. So, um, we actually ended up in court. It was the Thursday before Easter, but the child was removed on the Wednesday. We went into court on the Thursday and we got the child back. Child protection didn't have a plan B. The magistrate put the child back, with the baby back with its mother but there was no plan B and nobody looked after the baby. So my staff all put their hand up and said we'll stay with the mother and baby. So my staff cancelled all their plans for Easter and they went out and stayed at the mother's house over Easter. We actually stayed for 10 days and we never ever got reimbursed. The sad part about all this was that uh, <coughs> The baby was removed because, based on past information from 11 years ago. The client had, pre had previously had a child removed 11 years ago due to her drug use. In this whole time, the child protection being aware that she was pregnant, they never once met with her, never allocated her a worker or arranged to do so, or arranged to do urines to show that her urines were clean. They admitted they should have done another assessment, however, they planned to do all the assessments once the baby was out of her care. The client had to undergo a psychological assessment, attend parenting classes and undertake take urine testing for up to three times a week, despite there being no recent concerns about drug use. When the matter went back to court, the magistrate was amazed at the level of support, assistant and assistance Wanunga had provided. Child protection agreed to place the child back in the care, in her care, if she would agree to a one-year order. If not, they would proceed with the matter to court. Wanunga and Legal Aid have continued to provide support and liaison assistance to the client, and a year down the track, the child in, is in her care and the order, the order is no longer in place. Wanunga has provided countless hours of assistance in advocating for the client. This is work that Wanunga does not receive funding for and we provide this level of assistance, support, social and emotional support to around 65 clients and their families who are at risk of having their children removed or have had their children removed. So that one, that's just one and that was fairly recent and this is another one and I think it's quite fitting considering it's 20 years um, on the 26th of May since um, the release of the Bringing Them Home report. So this is a long time client of Wanunga who has a history of dementia, was recently diagnosed with terminal cancer. The social health team met with the client numerous times a week and were present when he was diagnosed with cancer. Upon this diagnosis, the client said that he wished to um, wish to uh, make contact with um, stolen gener generation clients removed from Darwin. He was placed into a home at the age of four with other children from his community and did, know, did not know who his mother's people were or any of his siblings. He considered the children at the home to be his only family. Social health team staff were able to contact some of his old friends who were in the home with him and start to trace down the name of his people and where his mother was buried. 
the social health team continued to engage with his client and took it in terms of staying with him in palliative care while he was passing away. At his funeral were his old friends from the home who were able to share stories they got up to as young ones in the home. Sadly, none of his blood relatives were present at the service and the service was made up mostly of one under staff due to the client's dementia and a large part of information missing, were unable to locate his family and the client didn't want other services involved in tracing them down and that was a wish we had to respect. The client's ashes will now be spread over his mother's grave, which was his last wish to be reunited with his mum. So, thanks, you know, like, this is what we do at Wanunga. You know, this is what we do for our people. Wanunga's been built around client need. We've got a mental health workforce and we've got a couple of drug and alcohol workers but that doesn't make us a drug and alcohol service or a mental health service. What we do, we've got 1,700 clients with a diagnosed mental illness, and we're looking after the majority of those clients in the community. You know, 25%, between 25% and 33% of the prison population are Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander. I mean, Canberra's such a wealthy, middle-class city, and we've got the, I don't understand how would you be able to look like this, you know, like, I guess it's because we don't have a discreet community. A lot of people are fair-skinned Aboriginal people. That's not by choice, that's by what's happened to us. So, you know, we've got the dispossessed, um, the disadvantaged. We've got, you name it, it's like a big melting pot out there, you know, like, and we all come from different places. So, just, um, Remember that, you know, as Aboriginal people, we don't know everything about what happens everywhere in the country. And we've had, a lot of us on this side of the country have had similar experiences growing up. And um, that intergenerational trauma that I talk about, that's very real for us in this place. So thank you. So that's Julie Toms. Uh, she is the CEO of Winunga Nimitja Aboriginal Health Service. I'm so pleased to see, see that she is sitting right next to our ACT Minister for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Affairs. What, what terrific seating you have there. Um, so, Julie, I, I